Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of God's Honest Truth. I'm James Templeton, your host. Glad to be here with you on this Wednesday. And uh, today, I'm going to the 10th chapter in the book of Proverbs. I thought I'd read from this and uh, share the wisdom who was considered to be the wisest man ever to rule in Jerusalem. So, you know, I always figured him being so wise, why did he have so many wives? But that's another story. But I'm glad you're with me. I'll say a little prayer to start it out. Lord, I pray that your spirit is speaking through me today, Lord. And if anybody's listening, I pray that you'll draw people to listen, that... Uh, there's any lost out there who, who are searching for the answers to the problems of their life, they might hear something in these words and come to know you and accept you as the Lord and Savior of their life. These things I ask in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Ah, right, let's get started here. I'd like to start with a 10th chapter. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. We have a lot of that going on today in this world. If you think think about it, when you look at the shape of it, we have we've had young people going to schools, shoot the children. Uh, but remember something, you know. Paul and God starts at home. Yeah, you children need to know they need to learn the bible when you take god out of the home you leave your children to the world you know so that is the cause of the trouble in america is that that we're not relying on god anymore let me go on treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness delivers from death the lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish but he cast away the desire of the wicked. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in the harvest is a son who causes shame. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed. But the name of the wicked will rot. The wise heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will fall. He who walks integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. That is the truth. If you notice something, if you notice one thing from media, even though people have come to the Lord, they will dig up his past and condemn him with it. You take our president, he had he had a wild past, but I know from listening to other people who are men of God, they believe that God, that Trump looks to God now. He actually prays. It's been shown that he, he prays with others in the White House and he keeps Christians around him. But they don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. They say, well, he's a womanizer. But I'm going to tell you, there's not anybody in this world is without sin. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all done things, especially people who, who are walking with the Lord now, have done things in their past they wish they could just wipe off from memory. Have to live with that every day. But I, I, I go to God, I ask forgiveness for my sins. He's forgiven me of my past. And uh, hallelujah, you know, I know where I'm going when I die. So, you know, you can have that same comfort. All you got to do is, you know, give yourself to him. The wise in heart will receive commands, but a brain fool will fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. I've already read that. Don't hurt to read it again. He who weeps with the eye causes trouble, but a prating fool will fall. The mouth of the righteous is well, 
of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Mouth will always get you in trouble. Sometimes it's better to leave it shut and not say anything. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. That is a lot of truth. You know, you can, just by what you say, how you act, can determine whether you're going to have a mess on your hands and, or if not, you know. Be walking with God. Like it says, love covers all sins. Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding. You know, where you get understanding from the word of God. Prayer, all that. But a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. And believe me, God will use the rod on you. If you're doing wrong, you don't straighten up, he will get your attention. Believe me, I know. I've been there enough to know. That's why I say, you know, uh, it's in the Bible, spare the rods full of the child. A lot more of the youngins out there are getting in trouble now. If they'd been whooped when they were younger, and at home, they wouldn't be near the trouble they are today. A rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of righteousness leads to life. The wages of the wicked who sin. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains, restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. But the lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for lack of wisdom. You know something? Bible talks a lot about the tongue. You know, tongue that, uh, which is so right. Jesus, when he was approached, and they said, uh, why does it your disciples wash their hands? And Jesus looked at him and says, He says, You Pharisees, you concern yourself with washing the outside of the cups, but you don't worry about the inside. He said, What goes in the mouth doesn't defile the body, it's what comes out of it. In other words, whatever you say comes from the heart, Show, expresses your feelings. And if you're not careful, your very words can hurt other people. It can cause hate. It can cause anger. Or if you're on God's side, like Jesus taught, you can express love. That is one of the things, you know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. And self-control has a lot to do with your mouth, too, or what comes out of it. You really want to think about what you say. They were speaking anger to somebody. Always catch yourself. If somebody's bothering you. Uh, trust in the Lord. You know, love covers a multitude of sins. And uh, Paul even shared that in one of, his, one of his epistles. I'd have to look it up to know the right one. But uh, the tongue can be wicked. It can get you in a lot of trouble. Get you into some of you husbands, you ought to know enough. That mouth has probably got you in trouble with your wife more than one time. And you wish, boy, what did I why did I say that for? So always think before you speak, you know. Have wisdom enough to think about everything you say. Walk with the Lord, study his word every day, and put his word into your mind and to your heart. You let you're less likely to get into trouble. That's what I'm saying. It says there, here we go, this is just what I was saying. Let's start over there at verse 18. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth a little. The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for lack of wisdom. See there? Solomon was this man in the world at, at that time. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he has no sorrow to it. Or sorrow with it, excuse me. To do evil is like sport to a fool, 
but a man of understanding has wisdom. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, and the desire of righteousness will be granted. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has everything has an everlasting foundation. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eye, so is the lazy man to those who sin him. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. The hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is strength for the upright. Destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. I have to go back to that verse where we talked about when the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has every last week. I heard a preacher the other day, I listened to a lot of preachers on YouTube, and I was listening to Greg Lowry. He was talking about when the apostles, when the disciples of Jesus were in the boat and the storm come up, and I mean, these were sailors, and they know how to sail on sail on the water like it and control their boat get through it well there here they are on the boat and jesus is asleep down in the bow there he's asleep and this storm was so bad it's the water's coming over it. it's tossing turning it's shaking that boat up and there's they they get scared you know because they they're having trouble controlling the boat and these are seasoned sailors they were fishermen you know so they knew how to handle a boat and, of course, they wake Jesus up said, Lord, Lord, we're perishing. And, of course, Jesus wakes up and he looks at him and says, Oh, ye, you of little faith. Where's your faith at? And he rebukes. He, he, tells, he, he tells the storm to stop. He tells the wind to stop. And it's just as calm. Water calms down just like that. You know, they look at him. What kind of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? What I never realized, and this preacher made clear, that God didn't send the storm, Satan did. Satan sent that storm to rock the boat and shake it up. And God, it said he rebuked it. You know, he rebuked it. That's the same thing he'd do with demons, rebuke them. Because you, the, uh, you go to the book of Job, when Satan goes in the throne room of God, and God says, what are you doing today? And he's going back and forth. He's, you know, when God said, you consider my man, Job, faithful, secure in his belief. And, of course, Satan says, that's because you gave him everything. He's rich, wealthy. You blessed him beyond measure. You take it all away, and he'd curse you in a minute. And so, God, he lets Satan have leeway. He says, go ahead and do what you wish, but do not kill him. So, Satan sends the storms, tornadoes and everything else, and his children had a habit of gathering together for a meal, party, and whatever on occasion. And on this occasion, they were all together in one of the houses, and Satan sends a storm, tornado. It destroys the house, and it kills all of the children of Job. Only a servant survived. He ran back. He ran back and he told Job what had happened. So I, I never, you know, paid much attention. You know, we see tornadoes and stuff come through here. That you know, Satan is the prince of the air. So it only stands the reason. You know, God allows him so much leeway on the things he does. He doesn't tell him to do it. He but he controls them when he says, "All right, you know, Satan, no, Satan, no." You're not going to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, he doesn't give him permission to do that. He stops them on some things. But a lot of the things in this world that happen is because God, you know, God has his limits on what he permits them to do, but are brought on by the devil himself. And that's because the devil, he wants to control this world. He doesn't want to face the end. He's already lost. That's why throughout history, he's done his best to, one, destroy the Jews. Because if he destroys all the Jews, there's none of them left. There's no reason for Christ to return because that's the whole thing about the tribulation. It's about the Jews and making them realize that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. 
you know that you know the remnant that's left if you study the scriptures you see that so we have suffering in this world because there's evil and it's not because god god didn't create the evil man chose it when he when he sinned in the garden uh adam and eve if they had said no well we'd be in the garden now but things didn't happen that way let's go on with this reading let's see where i went back to whirlwind the way of the lord is strength for the upright but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity the righteous will never be removed but the wicked will not inhabit the earth and that's true if you go to revelation and study they won't they're going to be gone somewhere they don't want to be the mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom but the perverse tongue will be cut out there we are about the tongue again the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable but the mouth of the wicked is what is perverse then we're going to chapter 11 of proverbs this is very good i'm gonna read through this i mean god covers everything this in here starting out with verse 1 in chapter 11 dishonest scales are an abomination to the lord but a just weight is his delight i don't know if you know this but back in the day uh coins were made out of silver i don't know if they had any gold. sure somebody had gold somewhere and what a lot of these people had a habit of doing they take these coins and they shave the edges off of them and they they'd save that silver off of them in other words the a coin's value was this weight this weight in silver weight in gold and you had people who started thinking they were real clever they shaved some off all these coins and they'd save that gold or that silver and that coin wouldn't be as worth worth as much and probably during a period of time i don't know how long it took they figured it out but people got wise so they came up with scales and they started weighing the money weighing the coins and they could tell when they were shaved you know a lot of people ended up in their jails back then just for that because it was it was illegal they could it actually you know same as theft get you killed so they would shave them coins off and save them shavings till they'd add up to weight of something but you know they come up with the scales so they could catch people doing that little information that you might not have known i don't know maybe you did when pride comes then comes shame but with the humble is wisdom the integrity of the upright will guide them but perversity of the unlawful will destroy them riches do not profit in the day of wrath but righteousness delivers from death the righteousness of the blameless will direct his way all right all right but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness schemes don't get you where sooner or later you're gonna get caught end up in the hooskow the righteous the upright will deliver them but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust those things that get you in trouble in a heartbeat some of you probably already been there when a wicked man dies his expectation will perish i like this verse and the hope of the unjust perishes the righteous is delivered from trouble and it comes to the wicked instead the hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor there you go there's the mouth again but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered when it goes well with the righteous the city rejoices and when the wicked perish there's jubilation by the blessing of the upright the city is exalted but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor but a man of understanding holds his peace sometimes it's fast to keep your mouth shut a tell a tell bearer reveals secrets but he who is faithful he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter a tell bearer reveals secret, secrets but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter a gossip gets in all kind of troubles nobody likes a gossip it's better to keep things quiet where there is no cancel the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety he who sure surety or a stranger will suffer 
but one who hates being surety is secure. A gracious woman retains honor, but ruthless men retain riches. The merciful man does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. The wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. As righteousness leads to life, so he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their ways are his delight. Though they, though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished, but pos the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. A ring of gold in a swine's snout as a ring of gold in a swine snout, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. There you go, discretion. You hear that? A ring of gold in a swine snout, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right. But leads to poverty, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. He who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. He who trusts in riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind and the fool will be servant to the wives of the heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. That's what I want to do, win souls for the Lord on the use of it. It's not me that wins them, it's God, but he uses us. If the righteous will recommit pence on the earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? Okay, I'm going to stop right there. That was two chapters. Yeah, I, I read spent my, most of my time on this reading the scripture, but you can't go wrong when you're reading the word of God, you know. You can't. I just hope by some of you out there who take time to listen to it. If any of you's lost, you know, I'm going to tell you, you'd be surprised how much your life can change. The Lord will bless you. You know, I've been listening to uh, a very good book. I'm listening to the audio book by Phil Robertson, which is called uh, the theft of the American soul, and he he is narrating it himself. He's and it's it is really interesting to hear his interest in his history, how he come to know the Lord. Because you know he played football. I think that was at LSU. If I remember right, but uh, same place Terry Bradshaw played. But he was a hit. Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw was second string till he left. You know, he decided, you now what do I want to do? Do I want to play football, get chased by all these big guys, or do I want to go hunt ducks? Like duck call. He said, you know what, I'm going to go hunt ducks. So that's what he did, but he had a wild time. He, was, he started hanging with some guys, started to go out drinking, partying, and everything else, and he was messing around on his wife. And uh, he'd run Miss K off at one point. But she was praying for him. And Phil had a sister who was saved. And, and during the time, Phil had a bar there for a while. And he didn't even taught school. He taught school, believe it or not. He went, went his, uh, earned his degree teaching. He said he was, a, he always says he was a C student. But uh, he was running a bar there too. And pretty wild place from what he said. And his sister told this her preacher said, "If you'll go speak the word of God, my brother, he will lead thousands to the Lord." And of course, Phil didn't know this at the time that she said it, but he walked in and he tried to witness to Phil. Phil ran a mile. Well, when Phil went off that went through all that, he lost the bar, and he got pretty low. You know, uh, like he said, Miss K had run off. And he got to the point where he really missed her. He regretted. He wanted his wife and his family back. And he he just got to thinking, I can't keep going this way. So 
and find out his wife was going to the same church that his sister was going to. And she said, he said, you reckon you get that guy to come and preach to me, witness me, to come back and talk to me? And they set it up. And, of course, Phil told his preacher, he said, I'm going to check every verse that you're giving me and see that you're you're telling me the truth, that you're not shooting a load of bull at me because you are, I'll know it. And, of course, he said, the preacher told him all about Jesus, showed him a little drawing, which he called the, the witness, which is pretty good. He had an arrow coming down from heaven, which show, shows that Jesus Christ came to the earth being born and how during that time when Jesus got to be 30 years of age, he worked as a carpenter, was dead all them other years, learning the trade of being a carpenter, his earthly father, which would have been Joseph. And at the time, which is the age that rabbis in Israel would start, you know, they'd go through all that training and start their ministry they start their being a rabbi at the age of 30. well jesus christ was the son of god he already had the knowledge and and, and the spirit came upon him when he was bad john the baptist baptized him said he saw the spirit of god coming down like a dove and land on him <coughs> excuse me and of course john heard the voice this is my son whom i'm well pleased that's how John knew that Jesus was the Son of God and uh, told the other disciples. He had two disciples who would follow, which you see John. I forget who the other one was, but he said, there goes the Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world. This was done twice, and of course, they went and followed him. But I'm getting lost here anyway. Jesus in three, I, I think it's a little over three years, almost three and a half. Uh, he changed the world. This was the Son of God. He went, he healed people. That This has not been seen way in their time because uh, the only healing you had was back. Elijah prayed over a boy, laid on him, that had died, the widow's son, where he was staying, and God brought this boy back to life. Uh, you had a leper back then who had to go down to the River Jordan, dip himself seven times, and his leprosy was gone. And of course, Moses prayed over his sister when she spoke up and said something she shouldn't, broke out leprosy, and she was out of the camp, I think, seven days before God healed her and brought her back. But Jesus Christ was healing people. The lame, they would get up and walk, blind they would see he raised people from the dead he brought lazarus from the dead this man's daughter he brought from the dead uh he brought them back from the dead he raised them with the power of jesus jesus fed the five thousand they were more than actually more than five thousand five thousand not counting the women and children were there so he took five loaves of bread and two fishes and fed over 5,000 people. Another time, I think it was around 4,000 or something, and there was leftovers afterward. He had, the, he had his disciples gather up the fragments, and they were like, you know, they got more. They're like 12 baskets. All this from two fishes and five loaves of bread. You know, they wanted to crown him king right then, king. This is the king of Israel, but he he left. That was another thing I liked about Jesus. Jesus would leave at night, and he'd go up in the hills, and he'd spend all night praying to the Father. He was recharging his batteries. He'd go up and pray and speak to the Father for wisdom and guidance and strength to keep doing what he's doing because you got it had it had to take a lot out of Jesus as a man because he didn't have that glory of God on him like. He, he was in glory in heaven. He's going to look different in heaven than he looked on earth. Because when you go back to the Bible in the Old Testament, the Bible describes Jesus as being somebody that, you know, nothing big about looking at him. Uh, he, wasn't a, he wasn't what you'd call an attractive man. 
or anything at all, you know. Uh, but he was healing people, and he spoke with authority, and pe he drew the people to him. And like I said, he healed people. He's still there today healing people, you know. I, at first, in my head, I keep praying to him. I said, Lord, you can heal me if you're willing. Because that's what the leper said to him. And Jesus said, I'm willing. And I keep, that's what I want to hear. Look, I'm willing, you know. Heal me. You know, it may not happen. You know, it may not be God's call. We all suffer. Uh, I consider it all suffering for the glory of God. If you go to, let's see, let me go to this verse real quick. I want to read a verse for you that I'll go by. I'll explain it a little bit to you. I'm going to First Peter. There's First Peter, chapter four. All right, therefore, chapter four, verse four. Therefore, Christ, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. And that's a lot, I think, happened to me, in my case, the suffering that I've gone through, heart surgery, and this other thing, is to get my attention because I had a recurring sin that I kept falling back on and doing which I wanted to stop. And this is fi this finally did it, you know. Got my attention. And I when I come across this verse, of course this verse actually means what Paul was talking about is Christians are persecuted. We're persecuted now. There's people in other areas die who die for what they they believe and preach. Hey, some countries, if you get caught with a Bible, they'll kill you. In this country, we're starting to get a lot of resent resentment for preaching the gospel and saying what's on our mind because if we say something against somebody, if we preach against a lifestyle which the Bible itself condemns, I'm not saying it's a great sin because it does, the Bible doesn't say that, but it's sin, sin. And God can't look on sin. What God named as a sin when the word was written is still a sin today. We can't justify justify any of it. I mean, if you're living that lifestyle, because the Bible says uh, those who they say they say. When we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries, you're not going to inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. You know, he's strict on it. The word don't change. It's in the Bible. I, I don't have to sit here and tell you about it. All you got to do is open up the Bible, Bible, go to the New Testament, and read this. The Bible tells us how we should live our life. And... God created us. And and if you're thinking that, no, I don't listen to somebody trying to tell me I'm supposed to, well, look at the way the world's living. Look at the craziness in the world. Any moment you walk out your door and somebody kill you for no reason. They just don't like the way you look. They go, you had a guy driving through Texas shooting everybody. And the only reason the law pulled him over is he didn't turn, use a turn signal. And this guy's just whack off in the head, starts shooting everybody. Kills several people. And, and finally, look at his end. He died. He got shot. I mean, look at that. Human trafficking. Say, they, they take these young girls and send them off to be sex slaves all over the place. In this country, this is happening. People walk in a Walmart and start shooting up people. Now, that's not the gun's fault. It's people's fault. It's godless people who no longer have any respect for anything but just what crosses their mind. 
They go plumb loco. We need Jesus back in this country. We need we need Christians back in this country. We need to spread the word of God. We need people realizing this, that that is our only salvation. You know, I, I posted something on Facebook earlier today, which is really, I crossed my mind and I find it humorous. But sheep are considered the dumbest animal in the world. I heard a preacher telling about this. They will follow the other sheep. If one sheep goes and walks off a cliff, the whole herd will be following them and walking off the cliff. They don't have any sense. They can't survive in the wild without a shepherd, somebody to look over them and guide them. They have to be kept up. Isn't it funny that Christ, God himself, calls his people, he calls us sheep. What, what do you think that says for us? It, we don't have a whole lot of sense that when you look at the, and if you look at the world, it's messed up. Our world is totally messed up. You can't say it isn't. It's because people doing and living the way they want to. They become a law in themselves. They live what, however way they want to. They don't consider how short this life is. You're going to die. We all going to die. And what happens after you die? Once you die, you can't change what's going to happen. If you're not born again, you're not saved, you're going to hell. And uh, you might think that's ruthless me saying that. Oh, you don't need to be telling. Well, it's the fact. If you, if you die at this moment and you're not saved, you are going to spend eternity in hell. You go to Revelation, the end of Revelation, all those whose name is not written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Now, what? We all have our impression what the lack of fire is like. And some of them call it uh, pretty severe. If you go back to one of the stories that Jesus told about Lazarus, the rich man. Lazarus and the rich man were the rich man partied, lived his life up, doing what he wanted to. While Lazarus laid at the gate, this rich man's house, sores all over him. Dogs would come by and lick his sword. And he begged for crumbs, stuff like it. Lazarus died, and he was in the bosom of Abraham, as they called it back then. And Lazarus, the die was in the hell looking up, said, Hey, would you send Lazarus down here just to so he could dip his finger in water and give me a drink? Because it is so hot and miserable here. So that must be pretty bad. And Abraham said, We can't cross over. You know, you, you, uh, you enjoyed your wealth and riches while you were alive. I said, now Lazarus is enjoying his. And and rich man, well, can't you send Lazarus back to warn my brothers and them so they don't? Well, Abraham said, if they won't follow the law of Moses and learn now, there's no hope for them anyway. So that's the fact of it. Jesus. Came down from heaven. Was. Started preaching at the age of 30. Three years, three and a half years, somewhere around there. Healed. Caused many to believe in him. And yet his own people, people who knew the scriptures. Crucified him. They knew the scriptures. They, Paul, when Paul was converted. Paul took the very same scriptures as a Pharisee because he was a Pharisee and proved to many Jews in the synagogues that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, that he was supposed to suffer and die on the cross as a sacrifice for everybody's sins. Jesus came and died for us so that we could have eternal life and as salvation. You know, I'm not, I'm not pitching you some bull. I mean, I, I sat in the mall parking lot one time. I was security guard at Hampton Place, and I watched all these people come in, and, and the thought crossed, how many of these people are lost going in shopping, doing their everyday thing, that if the Lord came back now, they'd go to hell. And I actually made me want to cry. 
it did. You know, I think that all the time. And many people out there are lost. You know, this world's not going to last forever. It is going to end, and the world's getting worse. We have people who are falling away from the faith. Uh, people who, they cuss the gospel. You start talking about Jesus, and they, they just, they'd rather pick up a ball bat and beat you with it. You know, we have Christians dying every day for what they're doing. We have missionaries dying because they're spreading the word of God, trying to give people a chance to be saved. You know, it's like saying, you know, if I saw somebody in a fire burning, I'm not going to dump gasoline on them. I'm going to try my best to try to put it out, try to save them. Same way here. When I stand here and share the gospel with you, I'm not trying to make you hateful or hate me. I'm trying to say, hey, man, this is the lifeline. We're just passing through here. This is not our home. Just, just passing through. Those who, who believe in Jesus and are following him have accepted him as Lord and Savior. They're, uh, they're throwing, we're throwing you a lifeline. We know where we're, we're going. And I'd like to see all of you go there. Like, like, uh, says in the Bible, God wishes everybody to be saved, but not everybody is going to be. There's a lot of people because the path is narrow that you have to walk. It's not an easy path to walk because you have this world out here. You know, a lot of people because of their cell phones. I mean, that it, say, it says people are worshiping. In Romans chapter 1, starting 18th verse, it says people are worshiping what is created by their hands. And when I look at that in life, first thing I think about is a cell phone. All the things you enjoy in life, this is Satan's world. These things that man has created, not created by God, but of course they're used by God. God will take something simple and use it. Like I am using this technology right here to share the word with you, share my testimony. But there's a lot of people that do a lot of wicked things with this same stuff, you know, and uh, and you see that in the world. But this is what distracts people from the truth. You know, they play their video games. There's people that sit all day and just just like this playing their games, Mortal Kombat, and have no idea that it's wasting away their life. And if the Lord comes. It's going to be too late. So I'm telling you, all you have to do is say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but I don't want to remain lost. I'm asking you to forgive me for my sins. Let your spirit live in me, that I do your will. I'm praying to be born again. Would you forgive me, Lord? And he will. Then, you know, Get yourself baptized. Find you a good church to go to. Baptize because that's a profession of your faith. That symbolizes the death of the young man and the birth of the new coming back up. And study the word of God every day. Like, like it says in the book of Joshua, the first chapter, God said, you will meditate on my word day and night and keep it in your heart. And your ways will prosper. If we, if, you know, that's what holding us back from not succeeding in life and having a blessed life is a lot of times we don't study the word. The Bible tells us to do the will of God. It took me a long time learning this. You know what the will of God is? That is to live by his word. That is the will of God. That's, that's how you produce the fruits of the spirit. And, uh, it's by living by the word of God. Book of James says, be ye doers of the word, not who just hears. Doers of the word means that you're living by the word of God. You're listening to God. You you pray, pray to God, like the Bible says, without ceasing. Which I'm not saying that you're supposed to pray every minute, of that, but pray without ceasing means means carry that in your heart where you feel the need to talk to the Lord. Ask Him for directions. You know, there's things that have happened in your life 
and and I've heard Charles Stanley talk about this. Like, for some reason, you decide to go a different way, coming home from work. You don't know why, and then you find out there was a real bad accident that happened. That if you'd been went that way, you might have been right in the middle of it. But God caused you to hey go this way, and you did. You know, I'll you know if we could look. Those of us who live for the Lord and follow the Lord, if we could look at each day of our life and see how much, how many things that God kept us from doing, we would probably be totally amazed. We would be totally amazed. That's a man, God, if, if, if I hadn't been living for the Lord, I'd been in a, a heap of trouble today. But for some reason, he had me do this, do that, go this way, that way. And look. God looks out after you, you know, and he will do things. If you do wrong, he will catch your attention and chastise you for it. Like I say, you know, give yourself to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray today that if anybody listens to this podcast, watches this video, that they will give their life to you, Lord, that they will learn how great salvation is. I'm praying that you'll reach out and touch somebody today. I'm praying that you'll bring people to listen to this, Lord, that they will listen to what I'm saying and take it to heart, Lord. Because I don't think there's much time left in this life, in this old world. It's become too bad. It's got so bad to me, Lord. You would have to do it like you did Sodom and Gomorrah because people... There's so many people who will not listen to this. There's so many people who will hate this. There'll be so many people that, that will curse this. And I'm praying that there's some out there, Lord, that you lay your hand on, that you call, who will receive salvation, Lord. These things, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Bless all you people. I really do. I hope somebody gets saved from hearing this. I, I honestly do. I want nothing but the best for you. I want to see you in heaven. That's where I want to see you. When I go and that day comes, I want to see you there. And I hope I hope you make it so. If God is pulling on your heart, listen to him. Don't say no. Y'all have a blessed day. Goodbye, everybody.